This channel is powered by patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Enjoy a library of specialized resources to help fast track your guitar journey. A dreamy chord melody practice routine. One, two, three, and four, and... Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started breaking down another instrumental routine. I've got a capo here on the third fret position, putting us in the key of F major. But because we're playing in D position, for all intents and purposes, we're going to be discussing these techniques as if they're in the key of D. Okay, getting started following along using my tab and my other special resources at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Line number one is going to look and sound like this. One, two, three, four and <laughs> Okay, and that's going to repeat twice through. Okay, so it began with a D major chord shape, striking the root note first, and then strumming through. All right, then we have this very cool melodic lick. Transition us into a B minor flat 13 chord with an open G string. All right, one more time that lick. All right, so we have the D major chord shape. We're gonna drag the pick through and then pluck the high E string with the middle finger, hybrid picking, as we pull off to the open high E string. Next, we're on to the B string third fret, again with the middle finger, and then pulling off the G string second fret to open. All right, so for you have, right there inside that triad. All right, then we're on to the fourth fret D string, down to two, pulling off the zero, and then to the second fret of the A string, which I find myself kind of sliding up into as I strum through a B minor flat 13 chord. Second fret A string, fourth fret D string, open G, and third fret B. Very moody. All right, that lick one more time, real slow. Notice how I hit an upstroke on that fourth fret of the D string. All right, after I hit the bass note of the B minor flat 13, I'm gonna strum through, again, using hybrid picking. It just adds a lot of texture to your playing. All right, from there to finish up this line of music, we're just gonna play the bass note and then slide to the fifth fret of the B string. Okay, again, repeating this twice through to get this routine started. All right, you put it all together and we have... Repeat. All right, that gets us to line number two, which will look and sound like this. Okay, so thus far, we've been playing a one to minor six chord change. Now, in line number two, we're gonna play the four chord, G major seven. The first measure of line two looks and sounds like this. Okay, so I took a G major seventh chord, uh, third fret low E string, fourth fret D, fourth fret G, and the third fret of the B string. All right, I'm gonna play the bass note first, and then strum through. All right, then I'm gonna play the melody. Five, two, five, three, two, five, three. Making sure to end on my index finger, which will set up the next chord. Okay, so so far you have. All 
All right, then a passing chord moving us up to the chord A major. This is going to be a G sharp diminished seven chord. Okay, so I've got the fourth fret of the low E string relative to the capo. And then with my index finger, I'm barring across the D, G, and B string third fret. I'm also adding my ring finger to the fourth fret of the G string. The E string, D string, G string, and B string are our target notes. Okay, so we're gonna start off playing the root note just like before, and then strumming through. Then we're gonna play this very cool lick, sidestepping on the strings. And then moving into another position of the chord. So here I played the D string, three up to six, the G string, four up to seven, and then the sixth fret of the B string, fourth fret of the high E, and then zigzag shape. All right, that is fret six, seven, six, seven. A very exotic sound there. Okay, and just know that whenever you're playing over top of one of these diminished passing chords, in this case, taking us from the four chord up to the five chord, it's in between them, you can play over top of it by using that sidestepping technique off of any note inside the chord. So off of the E string, just make sure to jump an extra step for the B string. Off of the D string, and off of the G string, and off of the B string. Okay, a very useful trick for soloing over top of diminished chords, which can be so tricky. Okay, you put all of line number two together and it should sound like this, the G major seven. Diminished. A slide away gets you to line number three and Okay, so here we have a descending sequence taking you from A major to A slash G to G flat minor seven. Or you could also think of it as A slash F sharp or G flat and F seven flat 13 rising up to another position of that chord as well. Okay, so we're gonna take the A chord and play. A, D, double D. All right, that double was with that hybrid picking again. Do the same thing to the next chord. Now it's gonna be E, D, double D. All right, then same thing. Now grabbing the second fret, low E string with the thumb. All right, and then arpeggiating the F dominant seven flat 13 chord. Sliding with the pinky into a higher position of that chord, we have the sixth fret of the G string, B string, and fifth fret, high E. You put that line of music together and we have. Arpeggio. All right, that gets us to our final line of music, which will look and sound like this. So to tie together our motif, we're gonna start off playing the exact same thing that we played in line number one. All right, except for this time, we're gonna to go to a G major bar chord shape. Okay, bar in the third fret, we have the fifth fret relative to the capo of the A string and D string, and also the fourth fret of the G string. Or we're gonna hit the root note, strum through, and then go to the D string by itself. So far you have. Strum D. All right, then remove the middle finger. We're gonna borrow from the parallel minor. All right, for the chord G minor, just strumming through nice and lush before doing a downstroke on just the high strings and an upstroke on the fifth fret high E string by itself. That will set up a melody to resolve you back to the D chord. All right, you put that line of music together and we have. Strum. 
All right, now let's see if we can put all lines one through four together for a complete routine. One, two, three, and four, and... Alright everybody, thanks so much for checking out this chord melody guitar routine. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And remember, if you need extra guidance, you can always head over to patreon.com slash lessons. There I have bonus resources for every tutorial I've posted here on YouTube, including tabs, chord sheets, Guitar Pro, and also backing tracks. So join today and you can receive 15% off your yearly membership. Until next time, this is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.